station, this is the Washington Post. How do you hear me? We hear you loud and clear. Welcome aboard the International Space Station. I am so delighted to be here with you today. I mean, I'm sort of a science geek. The Washington Post newsroom is buzzing with excitement. I want to ask you, and I'll, I'll direct this to you, Karen, first. You guys, has been up, you guys have been up there a couple of months. What's the biggest adjustment? I, I see you guys are floating in space. Oh, gosh, the biggest adjustment. Probably uh, one of the things that you learn is that when you drop something, you obviously have to look all over. We've had a problems with a couple things the last couple of days. And, uh, you know, on Earth, you drop something and you automatically look to the floor and that's where it'll be. And oftentimes you drop something and you look all over the place and it'll be right behind your head and you look back this way and look back this way and you don't see it. And you can look for quite a while before you find uh, what you're looking for. Have you lost a bunch of things, Chris? Well... It depends how you define loss. I think loss means you never can find it ever again. If that's the case, no, I okay. haven't lost anything. But uh, it's very common that we lose something for a day or two or three, and then eventually we find it in the air conditioning return. Yeah, so tell me this. What exactly are you guys doing in space? What sort of experiments are you doing? Uh, and how do they affect life here on Earth? Well, that's a big, broad-reaching question, but... Uh, uh, on any given day, we're, we're all three of us are usually working on some type of experiment, and sometimes they're as, um, to, as low impact to us as just setting up some equipment, and then the experiment runs itself. Um, oftentimes, we are the eyes and the hands of the uh, subject matter expert, the principal investigator who's on the ground talking to us through the radio, and then there are other kinds of experiments that just run all by themselves without our interaction what, whatsoever. And uh, um, there's many aspects of how they affect life on Earth, but I, I think our personal favorite is the use of ultrasound machines in, uh, in uh, remote locations. This is obviously a remote location, but the impact right. on Earth would be um, using ultrasound in place of an MRI in, in uh, really rural locations or, or uh, impoverished areas where it's hard to have a big MRI machine to get good quality medical care. Wow, that is very, very related to what is happening here on Earth. Karen, I want to direct this to you. It, it seems like uh, NASA's in trouble just in terms of funding, lots of debate uh, here about the future of the space program. As a kid, I just, you know, in class, they would wheel in the television and we see the space shuttle go up and it was such a huge moment. That doesn't really happen now. Well, I think, like anything, there are ebbs and flows in a process, and I think we're seeing maybe an ebb right now in, uh, in the space program, but I'm, I'm positive that, again, we'll see a flow. We've seen it in the past where there's been a decade or so where we feel as though we're not really doing anything and going anywhere, and, um, but I think there are enough uh, smart people in the country that will, um, will keep getting things going, and I have full confidence that we'll see a flow again soon. So um, I want to ask you, I can direct this to Chris, is the big get now in terms of where we want to go, is it Mars? Well, um, you know, it, it gets down to what people's personal opinions are. And um, if you ask me as an individual person, I think that's exciting to go to another planet. Uh, it, Mars is an awful long ways away, and you really want to make sure everything that you have um, to keep you alive is robust and going to withstand all the harsh environments and the trip there and back. Um, and they don't just, I'm a Navy guy, and you just don't take a ship out of the shipyard and send it off on a deployment. You have some cruises in the local area off the coast before and make sure everything works. And I think the moon is a wonderful place to do just that, make sure that all of the things with, that we're establishing the baseline for here on the International Space Station work uh, potentially on the moon, and then the next step from there would be to Mars. Now, that's just my own personal opinion as an individual United States citizen, and uh, the priorities of that um, have to do with budgets and fiscal things and where the country wants to go as, as a nation, and that's for our lawmakers to decide. But uh, if it were me, uh, that's my personal opinion. Chris, what do you miss most about Earth? Well, um, several things. Uh, personally, I miss my family. Uh, that's a, a, an obvious answer. Um, but the, you're probably interested in, in uh, some other types of things. I miss, 
you know, the, it's summertime, and I enjoy walking through the neighborhood and smelling all fresh cut grass. Uh, that's one smell I miss. I miss, uh, we had uh, a colleague of ours just like five minutes ago send us a picture of homemade chocolate chip um, brownies, and uh, I miss home baked goods. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I, uh, there's a lot of exciting things that I'm looking forward to getting back on Earth, but. Uh, I'll be there soon, so it's not like I'm really longing for them. But those are a couple things right off the top of my head. And Karen, what about you? What do you miss? Home baked goods. Actually, a lot of the same things. I, I really miss uh, running outside. Actually, I, I love to run, and uh, we have a treadmill here where we uh, um, use a harness and get uh, use bungee cords to stay on the treadmill, and we can run, and it's great. Um, but I really miss the, the aspect of being outside. That's one of my favorite things about running is going outside and um, when you're in different cities exploring and just breathing the fresh air. We talked a little bit about going to Mars. Uh, Karen, would you be up for going for Mar to Mars? I think it's like, an, what is it, an eight-month trip just to get there? Would you be up for it? Yeah, it's a really, really long trip, and there are a lot of unknowns right now. So if you asked me if I would go tomorrow, I would probably say no. Um, I have a husband and a young son at home, and, and I, um, I definitely, at this point in my life, would not be up for, for that length of a trip. All righty. Thank you so much, Karen and Chris. I, I'm, I'm, still, I'm just staring at uh, the photo here of you guys floating in space. It's so awesome. Good luck. Uh, we can't wait to get you back here on Earth, and you can get some brownies and run outside. Thanks a lot for joining us. Take care.